Crowley Milner & Company, generally referred to as Crowley's, was a department store chain that opened in 1909 and closed in 1999. Thank you for your suggestion. I am the spirit of Christmas present. Come with me to Crowley's, where I'll show you Christmas present ideas you never dreamed of. You see, it's an exciting new Crowley's we'll be visiting, even bigger and greater than the Crowley's of Christmas past. So come along now, where there's still time and a choice of Christmas presents at Crowley's. <laughs> Crowley's, the excitement of Christmas. In 1909, Joseph Crowley and his brothers William and Daniel and William Milner joined to save the Detroit-based store of Partridge and Blackwell that was struggling financially. Joseph Crowley had spent the previous few years working as a credit manager for Detroit wholesaler Burnham Sopel, a job which often required that he help reorganize struggling ventures. His brothers had joined him in 1902 to form the Crowley Brothers Wholesale Dry Goods Company. Milner was operating the W.L. Milner department store in Toledo, Ohio, a company that was a regular customer of the Crowley Brothers Enterprise. Joseph Crowley was approached by an executive of the Central Savings Bank of Detroit about the Partridge and Blackwell opportunity. The company was a specialty retailer teetering on the edge of bankruptcy due to organizational problems that was accelerated by the recession in 1907. Crowley agreed to take over the Strongly Company on the condition that his two brothers and Milner join him in this endeavor. They all agreed, and in 1909, Crowley, Milner, and Company was incorporated as the successor to Partridge and Blackwell. Crowley, Milner, and Company immediately set about the task of positioning itself as one of Detroit's highest quality retail operations. In the early 1900s, Detroit was regarded as one of the country's most beautiful and affluent cities, and Crowley, Milner, and Company catered to this image. The store was stocked with luxurious clothing and gifts, much of which was imported from Europe, as well as a fancy full-service restaurant and one of Detroit's best grocery stores. The newly refurbished store soon enjoyed a great deal of success, which in turn helped the real estate business in the area surrounding the store. In less than 10 years, the Crowley Milner and Company store had been expanded in size and was the largest department store in Michigan. Unfortunately, the company's success was marred when Milner was killed in an automobile accident while traveling to his original Toledo store. Not only did the company lose its president and merchandising expert, but his 42% interest in the store was sold by his family. Without Milner, the store eventually became known as Crowley's. Like many retailers, the Great Depression impacted Crowley's deeply. Sales plummeted from $39 million in 1928 to only $10 million in 1929. Joseph Crowley died in 1937, and his widow repurchased the shares of the company sold by William Milner's heirs to give the Crowley's majority ownership in the corporation. When Joseph Crowley passed away, the presidential position was filled by his son Daniel J. Crowley, who acted in that capacity for the next 20 years. His business strength was in the field of accounting, which was helpful as the company attempted to rebuild its financial stability. Also, he was an effective manager who possessed the ability to choose a quality staff, to whom he delegated a good deal of the company's operations. In late 1959, the first new store was opened in West Dearborn, Michigan. The store was a 100,000 square foot unit comprising of three stories and was located in a shopping center called Westbourne. 
The store was almost immediately successful, and soon thereafter, another unit was opened at the site of another major center of activity in Detroit. This store was one third of the size of the second, but nonetheless, it reached Teal's success soon paralleled the other two. Entering the 1960s, Crowley, Milner & Company decided to try its hand at operating stores located in two of the many indoor shopping malls that were popping up throughout suburban Detroit. New locations at Livonia Mall and Macomb Mall opened on the same day in late 1964, both of which were the largest enclosed shopping facilities in the country at the time. Throughout the 1970s, the expansion into malls continued. The original store in downtown had for years suffered declining sales, and in 1977, the store was closed and the building was demolished. In the late 1970s and early 80s, five more branch stores would open up. By 1985, members of the Crowley family, who still own more than 51% of the company, agreed to sell the store to Oakland Holding Company. By the 1990s, Crowley's opened a new prototype men's store, which was immediately successful. The store within a store concept focused on men's business wear and was immediately expanded to other branches. Crowley's changed its product line to more upscale, which alienated many traditional customers as Crowley's was seen as a more mid-market store. Sales would increase slightly throughout the early to mid-1990s, but the department store chain made an ill-fated decision to purchase department stores previously owned and operated by Steinbach Stores of Columbus, Ohio. Steinbach Stores were spread throughout the northeastern United States in New York, Connecticut, Vermont, New Jersey, and New Hampshire. Crowley's announced a costly lesson from its purchase of Steinbach in the form of a $4 million loss during the first quarter of 1997. The losses proved too great, and in 1997, that same year, the company began to downsize in the hopes of remaining viable. On January 4, 1999, Schottenstein Stores in Value City took control of Crowley's in a stock swap transaction. Two weeks later, trading of the company's stock was suspended. On February 8, 1999, Crowley's filed for reorganization under the Chapter 11 bankruptcy laws and announced it would liquidate the remaining nine Crowley's and 16 Steinbach stores and sell eight additional locations to Value City. So what are some of your favorite memories of this place? Leave a comment or a suggestion for a future video below. Be sure to hit that like button. Thanks for watching.